Hello, Nay. How are you today? Hi, Krista. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Good. Good, good. I uh, was in a different hangout, I guess. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out this whole new... Um, this new Google Hangout thing. It's different. It is different. What are you up to today? Are you putting more stuff together? <laughs> no, I finished. <laughs> so That's good. Today was a regular day for me. <laughs> good. Good, good. All right. Let me move all my stuff around now that I'm in the right place. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Today is a regular day for me. It's the last day that it's supposed to be really warm out. Tomorrow it's supposed to start cooling off. So I was outside today with my horses. So it was it's a good day. It's a good day. Hello, Juan. Hello, Shanae. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thank good. you. What about you? Doing good. Doing good. So, um, I enjoyed uh, your comment on my on my son's video about have I talked to him. Ah. <laughs> Well, uh, is maybe he can learn to speak Spanish. I want to teach him for sure, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Especially since he's not understanding the English very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. he's not talking to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you have to change the batteries. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, but I is saying the truth. It's very, very is cute guy and is. I noticed that's very smart. I don't know. Uh, I I would like to know. Uh, um, by person or in person? Oh, you'd like to meet him in person? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe one of these classes I'll bring him in. So we'll see. So I don't. I don't okay. know. If, I don't know if the Colingo team would want me to do that, but we'll see. So. But yeah, my mom has him right now. In fact, I think she's giving him a bath as we speak. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. so this is very nice, and all the videos that you had put about him, they are very cute. Thank you, thank you. I always said I wasn't ever gonna be that mom that posts a bunch of videos of my kid, but um, but I am that mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. I, I think I do the same when I have my first grandchildren. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, and um, is it Morad? Are you there, Hello. Morad? Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Is this your first class with me, or have you been in my classes before? I think this is the first time I have attended your classes. Nice. Well, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Excellent. Where are you from? I am from Morocco. Ah, from Morocco. Excellent. Excellent. One of my places on my list of places to go. Have you ever been to Morocco before? I haven't, but um, a good friend of mine went two years ago, and she loved it. She loved it, loved it. So I definitely want to go at some point. Yeah, it's very pleasant. Excellent. Very good. Very good. And are you a student, Morad, or do you work, or both? Well, I have worked in many positions. Excellent. Very yeah. Good. Excellent. From an Arabic teacher to a hotel receptionist to a telecommunication agent. To, to a communications agent? Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. I like your quote on your, on your picture. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. I like that. 
I like it too. In fact, it's Albert's. Albert Einstein's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. He has a lot of good quotes. Mm -hmm. All the smart people have a lot of good quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any good quotes. Well, I have a lot of favorite quotes, but I, they're not mine. I rip them off of all the smart people. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to class. Um, we are going to be talking about um, food today, specifically a drink, and um, also we're briefly going to go over possessive pronouns. And since this is an advanced class, we're going to spend more time on the article and discussion than we are on the grammar. So we'll quickly go over the grammar point and uh, do some practice with that. And then we will jump right into the article and everyone will have a chance to read. And we'll go over any unfamiliar vocabulary and then we'll have a discussion. So um, let's first start with um, our warm-up question for today. And... Um, my warm-up question is, what is, I'll put in the chat, what is your favorite, what is your favorite thing to drink? I'll have to be honest, I think my favorite thing to drink is a nice ice cold beer. <laughs> so, that's my favorite thing to drink. What about you, Juan? What's your favorite thing to drink? Are you there, one? Um, my favorite thing to drink is uh, red uh, tea uh, called Pure. Okay. Can you type it? Okay. Did you say red tea? Yes. Red tea. Interesting. Okay. I don't think I've ever had red tea. I've had black tea. I've had green tea. I've even had white tea. I don't think I've ever had red tea. Interesting. What's it made for? Say that again, one. Uh, I wonder what's it made for, or what kind of plant or flower you have to use in order to make uh, red coffee, red tea. I don't know. Do you know, Kristoff, what it's made out of? Mm, it's from grapes. <laughs> I got regular. <laughs> Do you drink it hot or cold? Mm, hot. Hot. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Juan, what's your favorite thing to drink? Tequila, definitely. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Do you like um, tequila blanco or...? No, the reposado is better. Reposado. Okay. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite um, brand of tequila that you like? Uh, it's called El Patron. Aha, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. And um, uh, Morad, what's your favorite thing to drink? Honestly, I, th I think my favorite drink is mint and wormwood tea and coffee. And coffee? Yes. Yes. I, I've heard coffee is very good in Morocco. Definitely, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'm not a coffee drinker. I'd rather have tea. I'd rather have tea rather than coffee. My husband is a coffee drinker. He loves coffee. Now, Murad, do you drink your coffee, um, in the States we call it, you drink your coffee black, which means you don't put any cream or sugar in it. Do you put cream and sugar in your coffee or do you drink it black? No, I, I just like it black. You like it black? Nice. Virgin. Virgin? Without adding any sugar nor cream, anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. I I've, I've got to have sugar and cream in my coffee. Yeah, it's I'm a wimp. It's too strong for me if I don't put cream and sugar in it. Okay. All right, guys. So um, let's go over. Let's go over possessive pronouns, and I'll share this with you, and you tell me if it's big enough. Probably could be a little bit bigger. Is that good? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. All right, so... No, you're not the only alcoholic here, one. I'm with you. I like no, beer. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. I know the others talking about the drink coffee, tea. <laughs> oh my God, I feel very bad. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't okay. feel bad. All right. So um, let's go over possessive pronouns. So first of all, they are based on three things. Um, possessive pronouns are based on the gender. Um, if it's first, second, or third person, and if it's singular or plural. So if we go over our list of possessive pronouns, you'll notice that um, the gender obviously is going to be for third person. Second person um, stays the same in terms of it's always going to be uh, your, but if it's plural, it'll be your or yours. And then um, first person, obviously, um, is what we call gender neutral, but it changes depending on if it's singular or plural. So the second thing to remember about possessive pronouns is that they can be the subject or the object of the sentence, but they do not change uh, the form depending on what you use. So if you're making it the subject of the sentence, Obviously, the subject of the sentence is the one who's doing the action. So in this case, the example sentence is, yours are the best. The object of the sentence is what's receiving the action. Jenny really likes ours. Um, and the third thing to remember about uh, possessive pronouns is that we will not mix up possessive pronouns with possessive adjectives. And we're not going to get into a lot of detail about this. But the idea that you need to remember is that possessive adjectives usually go directly before the noun. Her cat is climbing the fence. His cars are parked in the front yard. Okay. So singular, um, the first person and second person and would be I would be first person, you second person, and um, mine um, or yours is the possessive pronoun. Okay, So I would become mine, you would become yours. If you're talking first person or excuse me third person singular, the pronouns are he, she, or it. And possessive pronoun is his or hers. Okay. Plural, we would become ours in terms of the pronoun becoming the possessive. Second person, you, still becomes yours. And third person, they, becomes theirs. Now, you'll notice one difference is, is between third person singular and third person plural. Third person singular, we have an actual uh, gender specific. We have his or hers. In third person plural, it becomes gender neutral, and we simply have theirs. Any questions on possessive pronouns? Mm, no. Just what about it? It has no possessive? Um, it, or, it would be really, it would be it's. So... It's, um, if you're talking about, um, let's see, um, you'd ha it's kind of tricky because you would have to put it in the case of something, like if you're talking about a tree, um, 
it doesn't really have a gender and to put it in the possessive. So if you were talking about the tree like its leaves, then that would be possessive. But generally when we're talking possessive pronouns, we're talking um, about a person. Something, an actual person that an object can belong to or a quality can belong to. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about kombucha. Has anyone, anyone heard of this? Nope. Kombucha. Jeopardy? Uh, no, no Jeopardy. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. So I'm going to give you the link to this article and I'll screen share it with you as well. And we're going to talk about what is kombucha. Okay. And I'm going to have you guys do the reading instead of me. And uh, Christoph, could you read this first uh, section for us, this first paragraph? Okay. Cream or sugar with your tea? How about bacteria? Kombucha, a concussion of bacteria, tea and sugar, is definitely having its uh, 50 minutes of fame. Fans claim the popular tea-based drink provides a stream of health perks, such as uh, improved uh, digestion, less stress, and more energy. The pot the uh, drink has a uh, vinegar-like smell and a taste that has been described as uh, everything from rotten apple cider to fizzy. Uh, tart apple, uh, well, take the letter. Uh, can this at-home drink cure what are ails? You uh, hear what you need to know before you sip. Okay, so kombucha is a concoction of bacteria, tea, and sugar. And uh, it's the latest health craze. So this article is going to explore what exactly you need to know about it before you take a, take a sip. Um, <laughs> Juan, can you read uh, this next section entitled, What's the Deal? What's the deal? To kombucha is all the rush right now. It's hardly a new kid on the block. The tea dates back to 2,000 years to ancient China, where it was regularly consumed to rem rem remedy. Remedy, uh-huh, remedy. Remedy to remedy inflammatory ailments such as arthritis on to to ward up cancer. More recently, kombucha enthusiasts had, be, had used the beverage as an at-home remedy for acne, fatigue, hypertension, headaches, and constipation. Her headaches and constipation. May I continue? Yes, yes please. Kombucha is surprisingly easy to make at home. It just requires tea, sugar, and an active starter culture of bacteria and yeast. Read on the to learn about potential risks involving home brewing. The culture now has the mother culture is combined with tea, usually black or green and since for roughly 10 days. During this time, a thin colony of bacteria forms on top. After the ferm fermentation process is completed, the new culture can be scoped out and used to start other views, while the pugnant beverage belong is ready for drink. Yummy! <laughs> Do you think so? It's really yummy? 
Um, no. Um, <laughs> no. Um, Christoph, can you read this next um, section on why do people care? Why do people care? Uh, grocery store shelves and uh, trendy restaurants alike are featuring fermented foods like kefir, uh, sauerkraut, kimchi, and yes, kombucha. All kinds of uh, people from health nuts to celebrities to chiefs uh, are becoming more uh, con conscious of the benefits of eating grab rich in healthy probiotics, which are tiny microorganisms similar to the good bacteria naturally found in our intestines. Uh, researchers, researchers, research has found uh, consuming probiotics uh, can help uh, fight colds, uh, lower cholesterol, uh, and uh, promotes a healthy gut. Uh, alleviating issues such as uh, irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, and food allergies. Uh, go ahead and read the next paragraph too okay. for me. Related, ugly food you should be eating. Although kombucha purported uh, benefits uh, sound uh, impressive, as of right now, studies on the tea have only been uh, performed on your rodent. Whoops, what is it? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, sorry, Christoph. Keep going. Uh, Rodent friends. Uh, the exciting results sound uh, pr promising, though. Uh, one study found rats that uh, uh, gulped down the fermented uh, beverage and were subsequently uh, exposed to stress produced more antioxidants and had less DNA damage uh, that uh, their tea-free pulse. Uh, plus, kombucha actually reversed the damaging effects of stress on their immune systems. Uh, related research found that kombucha also prevented the reduction of antioxidants in stressed out rats. Some experts also suggest that kombucha is a good source of B, uh, B vitamins, uh, known to regulate metabolism and energy, as well as contribute to health, healthy uh, heart, skin, and nails. Good. Good. Uh, Murad, you're back. Would you like to read this uh, section entitled... Yes, I'm sorry. I had some internet problems. No worries. No worries. If you want to read this next section for us uh, entitled The Verdict, that would be great. Okay. The Verdict. The fermented tea's health benefits certainly make it sound appealing. But because regular folks who might not brew in the most sanitary conditions often make kombucha in uncontrolled environments, it stirs up a few concerns. With a good chunk of bacteria floating around in the culture and the air, brews have the potential to be easily contaminated and can lead to some unpleasant situation like upset stomachs in, in one instance, even death. Making kombucha in ceramic Hot is especially dangerous as the acids in the tea draw out lead from the glaze, contaminating the beverage with toxins. Okay, you can go ahead and read this next paragraph for me. Okay, there has also been uncertainty about kombucha's alcohol content, which is a natural byproduct of fermentation. A similar process occurs when making wine or beer. In 2010, Whole Foods pulled some kombucha off shelves, concerned that certain brands continued to ferment after being puddled. 
producing more alcohol than they claimed. The recipes and labels were tweaked, and now most store brews contain less than 0.5% alcohol by volume, ABV. Brews that have more booze in some contain up to 3% alcohol, which is as much as some beers, are considered alcoholic beverages and all, only sold to those 21 and over. So unless you guzzle several teas back to back, generally only 4 ounce per day is recommended. The chances of getting drunk or even buzzed are pretty slim. And although most batches start out with a hefty cup of sugar, most of the sweet stuff is fermented out, leaving one or two grams per eight one serving to put it in perspective. That's significantly less sugar than soda in most other bottled drinks like green tea and lemonade. Bottom line, if you're convinced about the health perks and don't mind the sour, vinegary taste, stick to store-bought bottles and skip home brews, which can easily go all right. Good. All right, so kombucha. It is a um, supposed to be a health drink, help with your digestive system mainly. And um, now people are saying it helps with skin issues like acne, um, constipation, which is a, a, a digestive issue, and things of that nature. So we'll talk about this more, but um, I want to go over any unfamiliar vocabulary that might be in this article. Um, Juan, I noticed uh, you typed something in the chat, and I'm not uh, yeah. sure. Just wonder if is this kind of bacteria. Oh, is is that a type of bacteria? Yeah, Casaichirota <laughs> is a bacteria, but I don't know if this one is what we are talking about. I, to be honest, I have no idea. I, I have no clue. Okay. No clue. So, um, so let's look at this. Um. Right off the bat, is there any vocabulary as we were reading that you found unfamiliar? If not, I've pulled a couple words and phrases that we can go over just to make it make sure everybody is clear. Um, what's a concoction? Mm, preparation. <laughs> um way how it's prepared because you have a uh, verb concoct mm -hmm. so is uh, how to prepare is <laughs> working in kitchen <laughs> um, yeah, you're you're on the right track um, a concoction of something is a mixture you prepared yeah. A, yeah a mixture of something so in this case the concoction is actually sugar um, if you make spaghetti, let's take spaghetti for example. Spaghetti is a concoction of noodles, um, cheese, and uh, marinara sauce. So any anything that is a mixture of, of something is a concoction. So let's see, what else? What is what do you think a string of health perks? A string of something. If something is a string of something, what do you what does that mean? Mm. How to say? <laughs> mm, could be a little bit. A little bit? Mm. Mm, what's the opposite? No, it's like chain. Yes. Exactly, yeah. And it's um, instead of a little bit, it's actually a lot. So in this case, a string of health perks is a long chain or a long list of um, reasons why you should drink kombucha. In fact, what is a perk? Um, you have uh, something conditional, perks of work. <laughs> uh-huh. Is it positive or negative? Uh, positive. Yeah. <laughs> Something conditional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's um. It's let's see a positive. 
I don't want to say side effect, but it's, um, yeah, I would, a positive condition or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess, I don't know, for lack of a better term, a positive side effect or a positive condition based on something else. So, for example, uh, you mentioned work, Kristoff. So, like, a perk of working for Kalingo, for me, a perk of working for Kalingo is I get to work from home. It's a, it's a positive... Um, a positive condition or a positive side effect of, of working for Kalingo. So, um, let's see. If something is all the rage. Uh, famous. Uh, on top. On topic. <laughs> now is. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you think? Famous. <laughs> all famous. The, uh, if if something's famous, we have another word to describe. If something's famous, it's generally what? It starts with a P. Can you think of the word I'm thinking of? Mm -hmm. I mean the Everyone talks about this. <laughs> yes, every yes, you're right. Everyone's talking about it if it's all the rage. Think back to when you were in school. Did um, I don't know? Do they have prom where you guys are? At when you're in high school, prom. It's like a big dance that everybody goes to. They elect a prom queen, and the prom queen is usually the most blank person in school. All right, I think it's popular. If something is all the rage, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Pungent. If something is pungent, what is pungent? Mm. Has to do with one of your senses, one of your five senses. Pungent is a very strong smell. And usually usually use this word in conjunction to a very unpleasant smell. Sponge. Pungent could, could be the ammonium or uh, smelly. Say that again, one. Is uh, ammonium or ammonium, uh, smelly? No. Uh, something that smells bad, usually, yeah. Hmm. Bitter flavor, yeah. So if something is bitter, um, bitter is very similar to sour, um, but it's not. <laughs> um, bitter, I'm trying to think of something else. Um, lemons. Lemons can, can be either bitter or sour. Um, it's, it's very similar. Let me see if I can find a better... A better definition for bitter. Oh, interesting. It actually. You say that again? Dark chocolate is bitter. Yes, yes, dark chocolate is bitter. Um, so, yeah, vinegar is bitter. Mm -hmm. And Look, here we have a, another, um, having a sharp, pungent taste or smell, not sweet, exactly. So, um, again, um, not pleasant. Generally, people do not like bitter. Um, sour, some people enjoy sour things, some people don't. But I can't tell you one person who enjoys something if it's bitter. Um, if it's too bitter. I like You like bitter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. But beer is bitter. What is bitter? 
Uh, beer. You think? I don't no, know. I drink, I drink really light beer, so I don't find it bitter. But. And uh, how I said chocolate, the dark yeah, chocolate, chocolate. I like dark yeah. chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate, I, I agree, is bitter, and I don't like dark chocolate. <laughs> I like milk chocolate, where it's nice and sweet. Um, let's see, what other words do we have in here? Um, grub. What's grub? Um, it's like uh, scratching. <laughs> No, there, we have a synonym for it. Um, in, uh, in uh, how to say? Uh, I say I'm ready for some grub. What is? What am I ready for? So where it's a word everybody knows. Grub is food. It's a slang term for food. So, mm -hmm. and um, like warm. <laughs> that's a different kind of grub. You're yes, absolutely. You're you're absolutely right, Christoph. There are there are worms that are that are called grubs, but. Um, we also use grub as a synonym for food, so yeah. But uh, you're absolutely right. Usually they're like really fat, and they're the round, round fat worms. You find them under logs and under rocks. And um, if you're ever out in the wilderness and you're out of food, grubs are good grub. They're good, they're good to eat. So. Uh... If something is fermented, is everybody uh, familiar with the term fermented? Uh, sauerkraut is fermented. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fermented, you basically let it <laughs> sit. Yeah, you let something sit and rot, basically, um, is, fer is something that's fermented. Beer is fermented. Wine is yeah. fermented. Cheese is fermented. Some meats are fermented. Um, Dill pickle. Say that again. Dill pickle. Dill pickles, yes. One of my favorite foods. One of my favorite foods. I love dill pickles. So, all right. So let's um let's talk about this some, and if we get enough time, we'll go back to the uh, grammar and have you guys do a little bit of practice with that. Um, so I think my first question is probably pretty obvious, and. Uh, that is, would you drink kombucha? Why or why not? Juan, would you drink kombucha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? I like to taste it, yes. Yeah? Why? Why? Well, well first, uh, you need to, to, to know how we test it and maybe like it. I don't know. You have to test first. Does it sound appealing to you? Does it sound like it would taste good to you? Mm, could be. Why not? Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Christoph, would you drink kombucha? Mm. Mm. <laughs> the same <laughs> I taste uh, because you cannot say your opinion if you didn't try something. Okay. Okay. Maybe I will not like. Maybe I will like. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But, but if because... you do not try, you cannot have opinion. Yeah. Okay. But uh, because it's a fermented drink, maybe has alcohol. So all contains alcohol is good. <laughs> Juan, maybe you are an alcoholic. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, it has about the same amount of alcohol um, as orange juice. It doesn't have a lot. Um, do, uh, well, Christoph, you said you like bitter things, so it might be appealing for you to drink kombucha. 
Yeah, I could, <laughs> but uh, you know, you never know what is <laughs> with your taste. Some yeah. people, it's like some uh, flavor over is uh, people is repelling for them. Like I don't know, people like poultry. I hate poultry. Really? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I cannot stand poultry, especially oh chicken. Is I guess we were having chicken tonight, Christoph. Are you sure you don't want to come over for dinner? It's uh, repelling for me. <laughs> I don't know if I eat chicken. I tried. Uh, I. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like eating this feather. <laughs> I, I I feel taste of this uh, feather. I don't know why. Okay. okay. I I imagine that it's like when you travel abroad and you are tasting food for the first time, you have to try it first in order to give your opinion. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm this is true. This is true. So are and Juan, you don't like chicken either. Yeah, I like it. You like it? Okay. Yeah. So, Christ so Christoph, what do you like? Beef? Yes, beef, pork. <laughs> okay. So instead of chicken, is a, a white meat, you like pork. So I love pork myself. Okay. And of course, fish. Fish. Um, see, I like sushi. I like raw fish. But as soon as you cook fish, ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Really? Uh, smoked yeah. fish? Uh, smoke, I will eat smoked fish. Smoked fish. But like fried or baked fish, I don't, not a, not a fan. Not really. Mm. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. I always say that cooked fish tastes too fishy. <laughs> so. Tastes what? Too fishy. Ah, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so. You have to put your, uh, how to say in English, you have to, don't smell it when I, to, yeah, um, to yeah. it's the smell, yeah. yeah, how you say tapar tu nariz, say what, tapar tu nariz, can you type it, tapar is how there, Oh my, I try to find the word in English. To okay. Cover, to cover your nose, maybe. Oh, plug your nose. Plug your uh -huh. nose, you'd say. Yeah, plug your nose. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the word? Plug. Here, I'll type it. Please. We say plug your nose. Ah, uh, okay. So you have to plug your nose and then taste it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, uh, sense of smell is very important for eating. It is. It is. Absolutely. Some things that smell really bad, though, do taste really good. I wonder if kombucha is the same, same deal, because they say it has a pungent smell, so it's got a really, really strong, strong smell that most people do not find pleasant. But sometimes things that have a pungent smell or taste actually really good. Have you heard about durian? Durian? Uh, it's a fruit from yeah. Asia that smells yeah. like, uh, you know, smells uh, like <laughs> Yeah. Well. Yes. I was watching a, um, a show on the Travel Channel about, um, about it, and the guy can't, he, he just, he couldn't, he tried it, he's actually tried it I think three or four times, but he, he'll he take like a bite and has to spit it out because the smell and everything is just so small, or strong. Um, dur durin, I think is, I, um, I don't, I don't know how to spell it, do you? Um, do you? Durin, yeah. Let's see. Durian, yeah. Here, okay, I'll give you a, I'll show you a picture, one. Please. And it really stinks. It smells really terrible. But it tastes good? You can get over the smell. Mm. You can get over the smell. 
I think it's one of those things that you either love it or you hate it. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so since kombucha is a healthy drink, um, whoops, what is the healthiest drink in your country where you live? Or what is considered something really healthy in your country? Mm. Uh, we have some some similar to this beverage, I think. It's called tepache. What, what's it called? It made it tepache. Is it made from pine apple? Okay. And the the cascara the. Well, they, they put in a barrel of wood and they uh, left that they fermented and they you drink it with very cold and it tastes very good. Okay. Okay. What about you, Christoph, in Poland? What's something that's considered a really healthy food or drink? Mm -hmm. If you have problem with your digestion system, uh, we have something. Uh, it's infusion uh, from walnuts. It's uh, you put uh, you know young walnuts. Uh, they are green uh, to uh, alcohol, and uh, will stay for a while and is uh, really bitter and uh, then help you with your digestion system. Interesting. Walnuts? Uh, yes, but uh, they are young, uh, green. Ah, green walnuts. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about um, in terms of the, the green walnuts because uh, my, my mother actually has a walnut tree in her backyard and right now they're all green. And uh, and growing so in America walnuts a walnut a walnut itself a, a brown or a ripe walnut is considered as what we call a superfood it's like one of the healthiest things that you can that you can eat um, unfortunately people make them unhealthy by putting them in cookies and brownies and cakes so. yes but uh, you you eat them ripe yes yes yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never had a green walnut. Yes, they are with these shells, additional shells. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and it's huge. I mean, it's a, it's a the green. Yeah. Is, it's really big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you said you put it in alcohol. Yeah, you make some infusion from this. Interesting. Interesting. And that's for a digestive system. Yeah. Um, Juan, the tapache, te, te is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, unfortunately it's not in English, so using uh, it. What, what do you use that for? Is it for digestive as well, or is it for other no, things? No, it's just a uh, beverage, refresh beverage. Okay, okay. Um, Are there any weird health crazes in your country right now? Is there anything that seems kind of odd to do that people are saying, oh, you have to do this, it's super healthy? Mm. No, no, just uh, to cook without fat, without oil. How can you cook without oil? <laughs> oh, there are uh, kind of pans that you can use it and you don't need to put oil on it. Is uh, Flavor Stone is a brand. I don't know. Maybe did oil makes everything so much better. One. Yep. <laughs> I can agree. <laughs> yeah, oil yeah, but uh, better. for example, for me that I have prohibited the the fat because the doctor. So right. I have to. I I know the flavor is not the same, but. Uh, I, uh, you have no uh, chance. You you have to uh, to cook in a healthy way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, I try to I try to cook healthy, but I love butter and I love oil. Yeah. So all the tastes of the best food are very tasty, but they contain a lot of fat. So yeah, I know all the good things to eat have a lot of fat. <laughs> um, last question. Um, where am I? There I am. And this is kind of a critical thinking question. Who do you think drives health crazes like kombucha? Who's responsible for making health crazes like kombucha or yoga or anything that's considered healthy? Who do you think is the driving force behind these health crazes and why? Mm -hmm. I think, of course, it's Hollywood. <laughs> it starts from Hollywood <laughs> because the people want to look like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, paradigm for them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Every time you hear of a new health craze, it seems to be like, oh, this is what all the stars in Hollywood are doing. You know, they're so super healthy, which I'm not so sure all of them are all that healthy. Um, but, you know, that's that's what they say. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think, Juan? Who do you think drives all these well, health here, here we have a saying who, do, who says, uh, the necessity is the mother of all kind of inventions. So maybe people who need uh, money and they uh, they commercial commercialize her products uh -huh. and they fools people saying that it's very healthy. For example, here in Mexico, we had a lot of products that they call miracles because. Uh, they promise you, for example, to keep you f keep uh, to cure to cure the cancer, you know. Mm -hmm. So and uh, until now, I know the cancer is no th there has no cure yet. But they said if you drink this, so if you do that, you can cure your cancer. So I don't know. I, I think this is the government who permit these kind of products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think both of you are, are absolutely right. I think um, people who are looking to make a quick buck, who are looking to get rich and um, have a good marketing campaign or are just really good at fooling people. And then Hollywood, of course, um, you know, yeah. seems, to, seems to drive it, drive it all as well. Yeah, yeah, you know the in the all the campaigns or the commercial, they only put healthy people, or, and if you want to to be like this guy or this woman, you have to drink this or to eat this. Oh my God! Yep, but, exactly. Yeah, and here with all the tabloids, you know, the magazines with all the stars. There's, I swear, all of them have something on the front that you know. Um, how so and so lost 25 pounds in three weeks, or how so and so stays so fit and healthy, and you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think you just have to do the best you possibly can. Yeah, but uh, at this kind of products, for example, I mentioned before the Kasei Shiryota, that there is a bacteria that mm -hmm. is supposed to be healthy for you, so they become in some kind of yogurts and another beverage. It's called, the brand is uh, Yakul. I don't know. It's a Japanese company. Oh, did you say yogurt? Yogurt, yeah. Yogurt, yeah. Um, it's called, um, in English we call it, um, I can't even begin to spell it, a bifidus regularis or something like that. I know exactly what you're talking about though. No. They say that they, you never gonna be a stomach ache because you consume mm -hmm. this. Yes. Yep. Same stuff. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So or if C or if not, I consume. Yeah. So I have to drink a bottle a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um 
I'm I, I like yogurt, okay, but um, I don't eat it. I don't eat it a lot. Um, they say when you're pregnant to eat a lot of yogurt. I didn't eat that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But my son's still healthy, so we're all good. Okay. Bacillus casei, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lacto lactobacillus, yeah, that too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. Good job, guys. Um, Tomorrow I'm teaching a lower level class, so I won't be seeing you tomorrow. Um, but I believe next week, let's see. Next. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> Say that again. No, Daniel write it acidopilus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But it is watching us. It's the big brother. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I'm teaching a games class next Tuesday. Oh, Daniel is, hi, Daniel. Um, acetophilus. Yeah, they, these are all in a category we call probiotics. Probiotics. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, so I won't see you guys tomorrow or Monday, but I am teaching a games class um, for advanced students on Tuesday. So I will see you all on Tuesday, and I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. And it's so good to see you. Juan, this is your first class back with me, so good yeah. to see you again. Yeah, no. And uh, Christoph, it's always a pleasure. Of course. Oh, yeah. It was a pleasure meeting you again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um, I'll see you guys next week. Okay. So. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. See you later. Bye-bye.